Hi there, I'm Kevin Benedict, mobile analyst and SAP mentor. I want to thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about in-business numbers and trends. What do I mean by in-business? Mobile business. Everything from mobile retailing kinds of applications to mobile marketing, the technology behind it. Just what are the trends? What's going out there in the market today? So again, the areas I'm going to cover really are mobile market numbers, updates on what different companies are doing out there, the new technologies, and the business to consumer or B2B experiences out there. Let's get started with the news now, and thank you for joining. Forrester Research predicts that by 2014, over 40% of consumers will be accessing the web via mobile devices. Now that's an important uh, number because prior to this, most people were accessing the web from desktops and laptops, but now 40% are already accessing through mobile devices. It's just going to get bigger. The mobile retail market will exceed 12 billion by 2014 due to smartphone adoption. It's going to get huge as more smartphones come out that make it easier for us to do marketing and purchases and shopping and browsing and searching just the more business we're going to be doing on the smartphones. 15% of all retailers are looking to adopt mobile solutions in the next 12 months. Big number. If you look at the total number of retail companies, 15% of them are active right now. 22% of retailers were increasing their mobile marketing budget. Now that may be through things like Google Places or Groupon or Scavenger or any of these other kinds of solutions, but they're really up in the marketing budget and mobile uh, marketing. And that's based upon that other number that more people are using smartphones and tablets to do the shopping. So they want to move their advertising budget to where our eyes and ears and time are. So Amazon sold $1 billion worth of goods in 2010 over smart or smartphones and mobile devices. eBay sold over $2 billion dollars worth of product over smartphones and tablets. So big time, lots of stuff happening in that market. <clears throat> mobile marketing, let's take a look at the mobile marketing category. Google has reported a dramatic rise in searches on mobile devices. So people are going there first, looking for things on their mobile devices. I know I have my smartphone with me at any time. If I want an answer, I'm not finding a desktop. I'm not powering up my laptop, I just pull out my smartphone and look up the answer. 88% of large retailers and consumer brand manufacturers say they will be using mobile marketing this year. Big number. By 2015, social and mobile marketing will influence at least 80% of consumers' discretionary spending. Now, I was really impressed by this. By 2015, again, social and mobile marketing will influence at least 80% of shopping and buying on discretionary products. That's huge. By 2015, total mobile search revenue will reach 8 billion or 11% of total search revenues. Now that number doesn't seem to correspond with some of the others, so I wouldn't doubt if that number changes. So Gartner estimates that mobile advertising will reach 3.3 billion this year in 2011, but it will grow to over 20.6 billion by 2015. Again, you can certainly see the definitive market trend there. While today mobile represents only 15% of onla online advertising, by 2015 it's projected it will represent 64% of all digital ads. Again, where are eyes and ears and time? They're going to be on mobile devices. That's where the advertising dollars are moving to. 1.2 billion in digital coupon savings were issued in 2010. That represents 41% growth from the year before. And really when I look at that, my analysis is that's simply reflecting the maturity of the companies providing mobile marketing platforms. So what are companies doing out there to take advantage of these numbers that we just went over. Let's take a look at a few of the examples that have been in, in the press over the last few weeks. So Office Max has a mobile marketing initiative that rewards consumers with discounts and coupons for checking in using Facebook and other um, location-based applications at their physical store location. Yahoo 
just entered a mobile advertising market by using location-based marketing service Groupon and Living Social. So they're in increasing the priority and efforts in that area as well. AT&T has a mobile advertising program that sends location-based deals via SMS and MMS when its subscribers are nearby. And they call that geofencing, where they can go to one of their, uh, let's say a retail store and say within a three mile radius, we can do some marketing for you based upon anybody that's a subscriber within a three mile radius that opts into these kinds of programs. Coca-Cola is rolling out applications for both smartphones and tablets. And it's a key part of their global, their global consumer engagement effort. So they want to interact and be closer uh, with their customers. The Chicago Bulls and the Miami Dolphins both have brand new mobile marketing campaigns for this next season here where they want to interact closer and share information with their loyal fans in the area. Now, Neiman Marcus is leveraging Scavenger for a new mobile initiative that rewards cus uh, consumers for completing specific brand related competitions online. Dunkin Donuts, again in the Boston area, they're focusing on what kind of location based services can they provide in a mobile marketing campaign there as well. So what are some of the technology developments in the in business space right now? Well, Google has expanded its local product availability feature on Google Places. Matter of fact, I was at a, a, a pub the other day and uh, used Google Places to find its rating and find the rating of all the restaurants around it. Just testing it out it seemed to work fine. Had a lot of participants already in my in little Boise, Idaho here, so I think that can catch on quite quickly. Adding a location component to a campaign gives mobile marketers the opportunity to increase the relevancy of their messages and make them immediately actionable. Let me give you a quick scenario. You get it, the grocery store has end of life produce. After tomorrow, it's no longer in a, um, in a situation where you can sell that produce because it's aged. Well, why don't you discount it today so people that may want that and can use that immediately instead of waiting can get that at a discount. So being able to say people within a two mile radius of this grocery store for the next 45 minutes, bananas are 50% off. Come get them between now and 5.45 tonight. Immediate action based um, programs that also take advantage of regional area and location based and geofencing kinds of technologies. So Comscore researchers found that 36% of US consumers browsed the mobile web in 2010, while 34% accessed the mobile web through an application. Now many of us know that, it, and many of us prefer in fact to use a native application to get information on the web, and it's slower sometimes to use a browser on your smartphone. We'll have to see how that's gonna change there. It's about 50-50 right now though, according to these numbers. Let's talk about some of the business to consumer experiences out there. And I can testify to some of these personally. I was at Columbia Sportswear in Portland, Oregon, uh, three weeks ago. And I looked at all of their dis tables and their displays. Every one of them had a QRC code. That's a quick response code. These little um, patterns that you see little square patterns on a brochure or on a sign. You can take your smartphone, you can capture the image of that device. If it's hooked up to something like Red Laser or another barcode or QRC capturing application, it can immediately bring up augmented information on that particular product. However, the problem with Columbia Sportswear, you couldn't get any Wi-Fi connection, you couldn't get any wireless connection inside the store. So they were completely outfitted from one end of the store to the other to support smartphones and QRC devices with no connectivity. Now that was a silly thing. Somebody missed that. It was a big oversight. <clears throat> the number of Canadians willing to use mobile technology to shop increased by 160% last year alone. So that means there's an increased trust factor and people have the devices that make it a more pleasurable experience to do that. The only company that had more growth last year in that was the U.S. 
Here's a challenge. A recent survey shows that 83% of consumers shopping on their mobile phones experienced technical difficulties. So we're going to have to get over those technical difficulties, make sure there's connectivity if we're going to take full advantage of smartphones and mobility in a business to consumer environment. Now my own experience is about 50-50. 50% of the time when I'm in a store trying to take a, a capture a QRC code and get additional information on a product, 50% of the time there's not good enough connectivity to make that work inside the store. The other challenge we all have, especially in the retail space, is we're going to have to increase trust. Trust that we're going to treat their data correctly and appropriately, we're going to preserve it, we're going to secure it and that the transaction will happen in those safe environments. With that, I want to encourage each of you to read the Mobile Retailing News Weekly, a publication that I put together and publish every week. You can find that on mobileenterprisestrategies.com. Thank you for joining us today.